In this video, we're going to talk about implicit differentiation. Uh, so implicit differentiation basically allows us to take the derivative of functions that are not explicitly defined in terms of a single variable. Uh, most of the variable, most of the, or all of the functions that we've been taking the derivative of so far have been able to be expressed as y equals something and then in terms of x. Um, so what we're going to be looking at is how would I take the derivative of something that is in terms of both x and y and we are not able to isolate the y uh, before we can take the derivative. Uh, an example would be something like x squared y cubed minus 3xy to the fifth equals zero. So if I wanted to try and take the derivative of this, there's no easy way to isolate our y's um, solve for y and then take the derivative. So we would have to use a process called implicit differentiation. So how do we do that? So some of the basic guidelines for implicit differentiation follow here. Basically what we do is we just differentiate each, uh, each side of our equation with respect to x or if our variables in terms of t we would differentiate with respect to t. Um, all of the rules that we normally use for differentiation still apply. So the power rule, quotient rule, chain rule, product rule, all of those rules that still apply. And anytime we differentiate something um, involving y, which is not the variable we're differentiating with respect to, we include a dy dx or a y prime to identify that it's not the variable being, um, it's not the, the variable we're taking the derivative with respect to. It's kind of using the chain rule. Uh, and then after that, we're going to isolate all of our terms with the y prime or the dy dx on one side of our equation, factor out uh, dy dx, and then divide by everything so that we can isolate our dy dx. Um, basically, what this is telling us to do is just differentiate the way that we normally would. But anytime you differentiate something with a y in it, you have to um, multiply it by dy dx or multiply it by y prime. And then in the end, we will ultimately solve for the derivative of y with respect to x. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, some examples using implicit differentiation. So in this first example, we have y cubed plus xy to the fifth minus x to the fourth equals 27. So let's go ahead and take the derivative of this. So the derivative of y cubed is going to be 3y squared. And then since we're taking the derivative of y, uh, it's going to be times y prime plus, And then this part, we're going to have to use the product rule. So it's the first function times the derivative of the second. So it's going to be 5y to the fourth. Again, we're going to multiply by y prime because we're taking the derivative with respect to x. Um, plus the second function, y to the fifth, times the derivative of the first, which is just 2x, minus the derivative of this, which is 4x cubed, equals derivative of 27, which is 0. So you can see that in this equation, we have a y prime in this term, and we have a y prime in this term. So we're going to factor out that y prime. So y prime times 3y squared, uh, plus that's a 5x squared y to the fourth. And then I'm actually going to move these other two terms to the other side of the equal sign so I can add this 4x cubed. And then I can subtract this 2xy to the fifth. And then our last step is uh, to isolate our y prime. So we're going to divide both sides by what we have here. So we're going to divide both sides by 3y squared plus 5x squared y to the fourth. And then in the numerator, we just had what we have on the other side there. So 4x cubed minus 2xy to the fifth. And this would be our derivative using implicit differentiation. Uh, let's try another one. So let's try this one here. So for part b, we can see that we're going to have to use the product rule twice because we have this y squared x and the 2x cubed y cubed. So let's try this one. Uh, so it's the first function, y squared, times the derivative of the second, which is just 1, plus the second function times the derivative of the first, so 2y times the y prime. 
um, plus, so then our first function is 2x cubed times the derivative of y cubed is 3y squared times y prime plus the second function times the derivative of the first. So that's going to be 6x squared equals the derivative of y is y prime. Uh, the derivative of 1 is just 0. So there we have that. Um, so we have a y prime in this term, a y prime in this term, and then we also have a y prime on the right side of the equal sign. So I'm going to move everything with a y prime to the right side of the equal sign and then um, factor it from there. So on the left, uh, this term will stay and this term will stay. So we're going to have y squared and then plus 6x squared y cubed equals, so we had the y prime already over there. Uh, if I subtract this term over, it's going to be minus 2xy times y prime. And if I subtract this over, it's going to be uh, minus 6x cubed y squared times y prime. So now we can factor out a y prime from all of these. So we get y prime times y prime times uh, 1 minus 2xy minus 6x cubed y squared equals what we had on the left hand side. And now we want to isolate our y prime. So we're going to divide both sides by what we have here. Um, I'm actually going to rearrange some stuff and put this in standard form. So the x's come first. And then I'm also going to just make this so that it says y prime equals. So in my numerator, we're going to have 6x squared y cubed plus y squared. And then in my denominator, uh, I'll make this term first. So it's negative 6x cubed y squared uh, minus 2xy and then plus 1. So this would be our derivative in that one. And then for this last one, uh, the derivative of the left side, that's going to be 3y squared times the derivative of y equals, this is going to be 5x to the fourth. And then to isolate y prime, we're going to divide by 3y squared, divide by 3y squared, and we get that y prime equals, oh, y prime equals 5x to the fourth divided by 3y squared. And that would be our derivative there. Um, so that's the basic method for using implicit dif differentiation. And we can use it in the same fashion that we would any other derivative. It still represents the slope of our curve. Um, so we can find equations of tangent lines and all of that other stuff. So let's look at an example where we want to find the slope of the curve at a given point. Um, so if we have this equation, 3x cubed minus y squared equals 8, and we're given the point 2, negative 4, we want to first take the derivative of this implicitly and then find the slope of the curve at the given point. So let's go ahead and take the derivative on this. So the derivative of this is going to be 9x squared minus uh, the derivative of y is going to be 2y times y prime and the derivative of 8 is 0. So let's isolate the y prime. So I'm going to subtract 9x squared from both sides. So negative 2y times y prime equals negative 9x squared. Divide by negative 2y. Divide by negative 2y. And I get then that y prime equals uh, negative divided by negative is positive. Um, so we get 9x squared over 2y. So this is the value of the derivative. And again, this represents the slope of our tangent line to our curve. Um, so if I want to find the slope of the tangent line to our curve at this point, then I just substitute in my x's and y's. So I get y prime equals 9 times 2 squared over 2 times negative 4. Uh, that's 9 times 4, which is 36 over negative 8. Uh, and then reducing that, we get that would be negative 9 halves. So the derivative at uh, the value of the slope of our tangent line at the point 2, negative 4 for this curve 
would be negative 9 halves. In this example, it's asking us to find the second derivative of this curve using implicit differentiation. So first, we need to find the first derivative. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so taking the derivative of this, first take the derivative of x minus 5 quantity squared. So that's going to be 2 times the quantity x minus 5 uh, to the first times the derivative of the inside, which is just 1, plus the derivative of this, which is going to be 2y times y prime equals the derivative of 36, which is 0. And then isolate the y prime. So I'm going to subtract 2 times the quantity x minus 5 to the other side. So we have 2y times y prime equals negative 2 times the quantity x minus 5 minus 5. Uh, divide by 2y. And we get that y prime equals. Uh, we have this factor that can cancel there. And I can actually distribute this negative through. So if I do that, I end up with uh, negative x plus 5 all divided by y. Or I could express this as 5 minus x over y. So this is the first derivative. Um, if I want to find the second derivative, I can just take the derivative of y prime. So y double prime is going to be, uh, looks like we're going to have to use the quotient rule. So in the quotient rule, I know that it's the denominator function times the derivative of the numerator, which is going to be negative 1, minus the numerator function, 5 minus x, times the derivative of the denominator. Uh, the derivative of y is just y prime. And then all divided by y squared. Um, so we get that y double prime is negative y minus the quantity 5 minus x. Now I already know what the expression of y prime equals, right? We found that over here. So I can actually substitute in the value of y prime into this to help me with the simplifying. So I'm going to say, I'm going to substitute in that uh, y prime is 5 minus x over y, all divided by y squared. Um, at this point, I want to get rid of my compound fraction. So I'm going to multiply this quotient by y over y, multiply by the common denominator to get rid of our fraction. So if I distribute this y through to both pieces, I'm going to get that y double prime is equal to, so this is going to become negative y squared, right? Multiplying y times y. Uh, the y, when I multiply this chunk, those y's will just cancel. So I end up with minus 5 minus x to the second, all divided by y squared times y is going to be y cubed. So this is the second derivative of the function that we started with. Sometimes when we are trying to take the derivative, we need to change the way that it looks a little bit. Um, and one way that we can do that is to utilize logarithmic functions and use the properties of logs to help us. So it's convenient sometimes for us to use logarithms by taking the log of both sides and helping us differentiate non-logarithmic functions. We call this procedure logarithmic differentiation. Uh, so let's take a look at an example of this. So if I want to find the derivative of y with respect to x for y equals x times the cosine of x, what can I do? Well, we just talked about using logarithmic differentiation, so I'm guessing we're probably going to have to do that. If I were to take the natural log of both sides, I end up with the natural log of y equals the natural log of x times the cosine, x to the cosine of x. Uh, using properties of logs, I can know I can bring this cosine of x down to the front. So I end up with the natural log of y equals x times, sorry, equals the cosine of x times the natural log of x. So now what we want to do is we want to take the derivative of this function. So let's go ahead and do that. So the derivative of the natural log of y would be 1 over y 
times y prime equals, uh, this is going to be product rule, so the first function times the derivative of the second function plus the second function times the derivative of the first. So that's what we get there. So we end up with y prime over y equals cosine x over x uh, minus sine x times the natural log of x. And then to get y prime by itself, we're going to multiply both sides by y. And we get that y prime equals. And again, I already have an expression for y. We were given that in the very beginning. So I'm going to substitute x cosine x in for y. So we get x to the cosine of x times the cosine of x divided by x minus sine of x times the natural log of x. So this would be the derivative for x to the cosine of x.